with you. So I had the honor of kicking off uh, the International Art Museum of America's very first monthly adult activities event at events at the museum. So they've been wanting to diversify um, their events for a little while. So they're adding in this new adult program. So I really hope you guys tune in for other future tutorials as well. So a little bit about me. Um, I'm an Oakland based artist. I am a figurative and pop artist that specializes in street fashion. Uh, I only paint street fashion. I'm extremely fascinated by it. So I'm excited to share that with you today. This is the image we'll be working on. I wanted to show you the, the source. So I always source my images from Instagram and I try to credit, uh, you know, the, the fashionista as, as often as possible. So the image on the right is what we'll actually be painting. I love zooming in on outfits and just cropping it and coming up with really cool compositions. So I just want to review the required materials for this class. First, you need a square canvas. Any size will do, but this one's 12 by 12. We need fluorescent yellow, fluorescent red, cadmium red medium or any red, um, cadmium yellow medium, cadmium yellow deep, phthalo blue, black, and white. What's essential for this class is slow dry blending medium. I want you to have a combination of old brushes for dry brushing that you don't mind really messing up and also new brushes for really clean glazing. Um, if you have a pencil, that would be great for drawing the composition. Uh, a palette knife is always ideal for mixing colors, but don't worry if you don't have one, just designate, you know, one brush for mixing only. Okay. So this video is about my five stage painting process. Very first step, draw out the composition. Second step, we do a fluorescent underpainting. I love having those really bright undertones pop out, you know, at the end of the painting. I think it's a really exciting thing to discover. So after that, I dry brush shadows and midtones. Then following that step, I glaze the shadows and midtones with the slow dry blending medium. At the very end, we put in highlights where needed. Okay, you guys. So I'm going to stop my screen share right now. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and get started. Okay. So I have this super handy dandy zoom in HD camera here. Um, let me get it straight. Sorry if you're dizzy. Okay, here we go. Get your pencil out. Um, so also actually what I wanted to do was upload an image for you. Um, here we go. Let me see. Hmm. One moment, you guys, let me try to get this in here for you. Huh? Okay, so uh, I can't figure it out, but that's all right. So we will just go ahead. I want you to sort of visually break this uh, canvas up into fifths. So um, from the top right corner, about one fifth in, we're gonna draw a line. Just, we're gonna focus on marking landmarks. I want you to keep really loose sketches. Um, I want you to focus on light pencil work and on the overall shapes not accuracy. You know, the objective of this, of this class is to make a painting, not to duplicate the image. So you can Picasso this out. Um, no worries there. Don't worry about being precise. So one fifth in from the top right corner, we're doing a marker. Um, and one fifth in from the bottom left corner, we're doing another marker. Two fifths in from the bottom right hand corner, we are doing another mark, okay? So very easily you can see that there is a great diagonal line that connects from that top mark to this bottom mark. I would say about half of a one-fifth, you're gonna make a mark signifying the arm right here, okay? And we can just go ahead and connect those lines into the sweater. 
So we're gonna draw the sweater now, okay? From the top left corner, we're just going to simply draw a line like that, okay? About one fifth down, we're gonna do another curve. And one fifth down, the final curve, okay? Let me make sure this is, yep, that's focused for you. Okay, um, so now at this point, let's just, let's just figure out the pants. We're gonna do the arm and the hand later because that's a little bit difficult. So, just remember that the right leg is coming in front of the left leg. So we're gonna draw that line first and then follow it down with that line. About one fifth up, from the bottom is where the pant leg ends. All right, so you're just gonna have to sort of draw out the sweater intuitively. It's just a bunch of curves. And this line right here signifies uh, the shadow and the folding of the sweater. Now, this is a little bit difficult. So if you just need to box out shapes, um, triangles, rectangles, whatever, that's fine. Um, the objective of this class, again, is to simply take in my five-stage painting process, um, not uh, make a, a very um, exact replication of the photograph. So this, the arm and the hands is about four lines, okay? So we go one down and then curve to the right for the second one. This is the second line. And then number three and number four. We are simply going to make some half circles here. And the hand curves down really beautifully, okay? That's the thumb. And then, so you can see three fingers in this, okay? Well, four with the thumb. One, two, three. Now here comes the fun part. We get to draw on the pants. So the reason why I chose this photo is because, you know, it has all of these unique doodles. So I wanted to give you guys the opportunity to make your own drawings. You know, you don't have to, to do exactly what's on these pants. Um, you know, do whatever that you love. So I'm going to start here. I'm going to ignore the squiggles on the left because I can just do that freehand later. I'm going to go ahead and sort of try to, you know, draw out the anarchy symbol here and make it wobbly, you know, because it's going over pants and stuff like that. Don't worry about it being accurate. Don't worry about making it bubble like 3D. Just do one line. That's totally fine. Now the, the A right here connects with the K. All of this is connected. So the K connects with the A and the A connects with the X. Do the best you can to draw out Hello Kitty. She has one, two, three, four, five teeth, okay? Just some oval eyes. And an X for the nose. I'm simply gonna do a big X right there to mark the bones. I'm not gonna um, draw in any more of the marks because I want to give you some creative freedom at the end. Okay, so now that we've done this, we get to do the underpainting. So I hope you all have your water and your brushes ready. Um, so what I've done, and I want you to do the same, is I want you to squeeze out all of your colors. I want them all out so that you don't have to worry about um, squeezing them out as we go. Fantastic. I'm gonna take my biggest brush, sorry about that, my biggest brush here, and I'm going to go ahead and you know get it pretty wet we do want it pretty wet because it will spread easier. And I'm gonna go up and down like this 
we're filling in the sweater and the pants, not the background, not the arm and the hand. I don't expect you to go as fast as me. Um, I think it's good that I probably get a little bit ahead of you guys so that you have um, something to reference. Don't cake it on too thick because we want it to dry quickly. And we also want it to stay transparent. If you can stay in the lines, please do. If you can't, whatever, this is your painting. Make it abstract, expressionist. Whatever makes you feel like you're having fun is how you should be painting. If you feel stressed, loosen up. Okay. So that shouldn't take very long. We want it to be really quick. I'm gonna go ahead and rinse my brush off and really, you know, get that water off a little bit, dip it back in so I don't have any yellow on there. And I'm going into the fluorescent red. Okay. Oh, I for don't forget to do the yellow up here with the sleeve. I forgot that. I'll get back to it in a second. So I'm just making one big line all the way down. Don't forget there's background popping through in the hand there that we want to keep blank. And if you do go over it, no biggie, just use your finger and erase it. Okay, great. You know, a painting like this would typically take me probably eight hours. Um, I'm a very precise painter. So this is gonna be loose and that's all you should really expect of this. You can always refer back to this video another day so that you can take your time with it and really, really work on it and you know, build technique and skill. Okay, so the next step is really fun part, the dry brushing. So I want you to go ahead and break out your old brushes, ones again that you do not care about ruining. And we're gonna go ahead and use the biggest dry brush that you have to um, put the shadows in the sweater. So we're gonna go ahead and just put a little bit of cadmium yellow deep on your brush. And we're gonna fill in here some of the shadows. Now, I, you know, my paint is still a little bit wet. So, you know what I think we're gonna do while it dries is we're gonna migrate to the background. So let's take the big brush actually that you had used for the um, fluorescence. Go ahead and dip it into the cadmium yellow deep. While the sweater dries, we're just gonna paint the background. I always like to paint the sides all of my canvases are usually one and a half inches deep. So I paint the sides side so that it really gives the feeling that it's wearable art. You know, the fact that it wraps around helps it feel like it's actually a human wearing it. Again, try to stay in the lines, but not a big deal if you don't. Now I'm gonna to switch to a smaller brush because getting in these angles is a little difficult. Um, I'm using a new brush, a nice new brush, medium size. 
cadmium yellow deep. So my fluorescent's still a little bit wet. You can see I smudged it a little bit there when I was doing the background. That's okay. We're just gonna do the best we can. And you can do this again in your own time. That's why this takes me about eight hours is because there's a lot of waiting time. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my big, big dry brush and aggressively rub it against a rag, paper towel, or your pants. Either or, just as long as you really get that moisture out. You know, you wanna be able to flick it with no moisture. So again, cadmium yellow deep. I'm just going in here and just marking in just like random shadows, not a big deal, okay? Really rinse that off. Squeeze the water out, aggressively rub it. Um, and now we're gonna do a yellow medium, okay? Same size brush, cadmium yellow medium. We're gonna go here. You see how I'm rubbing like this? We're not making nice, beautiful streaks. We're being pretty aggressive with it. All right. Now let's move on to the black stripes. Same brush. Dipping into phthalo blue. No water. Aggressively filling in this bottom stripe here. Look how beautiful that blue is, are you kidding? Yum, love these colors you guys. Hopefully I'm not blocking you. You know, if you need to flip it, I often do. That way I can really make sure, put a better angle and make I can make sure that this line is a little bit more accurate. I'm not stressing too much about keeping these lines, um, coloring in these lines, it's fine. Don't stress about it. More dry brush, more blue. We're gonna go ahead and do this upper stripe. I just got a little bit of wet fluorescent yellow on my brush, so I really wanna get that off before I continue painting. All right. Um, am I moving too fast? I hope not. This class is about an hour and a half, so I definitely want to keep the pace up, but I don't want to be so far ahead of you guys where you're lost. So, you know, if you need me to slow down, just say something in the chat, um, and Katrina, Katrina can let me know, um, you know, when I need to pause a little bit. So now what we're going to do is dry brush the pants. I'm still going to use this really big, really big dry brush. Make sure that I have still some blue on there. So really got to clean that. Hi, Marissa. So we do have a couple of requests to catch up a little bit here awesome. from, some, from some people. Thank you for letting me know. Yes. 
And as well, I wanted to make sure that everyone knew that we will have an intermission as well. I think we're going to get to more of a better um, point for that, but we will have a, an intermission in between this tutorial that will allow for both chat and video questions. So keep those handy. So keep those handy as well. Yeah, so we will be doing an intermission between steps four and five in order to give the slow dry medium time to dry. Slow dry medium can take about 45 minutes to dry, but we're not going to wait that long. You know, we'll, we'll however long the Q&A is, is how long um, we, we'll wait. So hopefully you guys have a lot of questions. <laughs> and um, Katrina, should I start again? Or do you? Let's. No, oh, I'll wait longer. We're going we can let's so we can pause for a minute here every um everybody and let's unmute and you are let me do that okay Everybody should be able to unmute and we can answer a few questions if you have them. Looks like Nishi's having trouble unmuting. So for a very light green, we are going to be taking some white and really clean off, you know, your brush or your palette knife in between. We don't want to be dipping, uh, mixing, you know, blues with the yellows. Uh, we want it to stay very clean. So we're going to take that, that white. We're going to take just a teensy, teensy bit of phthalo blue. Again, wipe off your, your palette knife and a decent amount of that fluorescent yellow, just because it is level one, therefore it is pretty transparent. But this is your painting. If you make a different color than me, it's gonna be an awesome, beautiful color. If your drawing looks a little, you know, lopsided or, you know, whatever, it doesn't matter. It's just going to look super cool at the end, no matter what you've done. The whole point of this is just to build technique on painting, not to be like an incredible drawer. Um, what's really important about mixing paint is that you mix until there's no more streaks. Oh, I just broke my own rule and dove in with, with green. Um, but I want to make it just a little bit darker. And if you're using a mixing brush, just make sure that you really clean it off when you're done. Okay. Great. I don't see too many streaks just to save time here. Wow, look at that gorgeous color. Are you kidding me? I love color. Okay. So we're going to use that medium sized dry brush, uh, dip it in that green, no water, none. And we're going to mark the shadows in the pants, which is really fun. So be loose with this. Now, you know, you can see in the picture where the shadows are. We're just going to start with the center leg. We, we're doing dry brush shadow on the left side because it falls behind the right leg. Okay. And I have a little bit too much paint on my brush, so I'm actually gonna wipe some off and then go in there with the dry brush. We don't, we don't want thick paint for dry brush. We want it thin. And this shadow actually comes over a little bit, okay? Just like that. And the pants, they, they, 
fall under the sweater. So there's definitely going to be a shadow there. Again, too much paint on my brush. So then I just go in and really scrub it in there. I'm doing a shadow behind the hand. So essentially the whole left side, I mean, excuse me, the whole right side of the pant leg is going to be in shadow. That looks pretty good. So this little crease right here is actually pretty dark. Um, so I am going to add more blue to my green. You can just sec, you know, take off a little bit of that green to the side and mix in some blue so that it does get darker. You don't need much because we're just doing like a little line. Okay, wiping off my palette knife. I'm gonna take a rigor brush, dry, and I'm gonna make these deeper shadows more visible. Yeah. And I'm using my finger to loosen up the edges. I don't want any like crisp edges with the dry brush. We all, we want it to be really loose. Let me refocus it. So you can see how loose my brush work is. The slow dry medium is where we really get to, you know, precision. So in particular for these pants, which is very rare for me to, to do this, I'm skipping the dry brushing of the mid-tones. Um, because these pants are naturally so bright, uh, I need to maintain that brightness. And that means, you know, not, not clogging it with too much paint. So here we are. Next step is the skin. We're going to dry brush the skin. And skin is a fun color to make. And what I definitely want to make clear here is that this is your painting. You can make whatever skin color you want. You know, if you have burnt umber, burnt sienna, go ahead and, you know, make brown skin. But I'm going to try to match this picture-ish as best as I can. So the way that we make, um, we're going to do shadows first. So I want to do a violet shadow. Taking some blue. Some red, breaking my rules, you guys. Um, we want this to be more of like a red violet instead of a blue violet. By the way, it is called violet, not purple. All right. There we go. Okay. Refocus. Here we go. Okay. So for this, because it's so small, I'm going to use like my smallest size dry brush. If you want to use the same size dry brush that you did for the pants, that should be fine too. 
So without any water, I'm dipping my small dry brush into the violet. And let's do the shadows on the skin. I really want to make sure that you don't have too much violet on. We want to make, in some sense, we, we want to see the, the fluorescent red under the shadow. So you don't really need to cake it on. That's what's so nice about dry brush is that, you know, it does leave all these little holes, uh, these little pockets where you can see the underpainting. That's very intentional for me. This part's going to seem hard. You're going to be like, the dry brush isn't working. I can't fill it all in. Don't worry about it. Um, and then we have some shadow on the finger here and on the tip Oops. of that finger. I'm just going to kind of erase that a little bit. Okay, and then we have a little bit of shadow on the thumb, but don't go into the nail. Paint the shadow around the nail. You're seeing me look this direction because that's where I have the photograph pulled up. Okay. I know I'm probably a little bit ahead of you, but that's okay. You'll catch up as I talk. I'm going to take out that same rigor brush that I used for um, the deep shadow in the pants here. I'm going to dip it into that violet. And I'm just going, you know, actually pretty much just like outline the hand in a beautiful dark purple. I mean, oh my gosh, violet, excuse me. Hi, Marissa. We have a request to see the photo, the photo inspiration one more time, just so that people oh, okay. can reference back to it. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Um, I'm going to share my screen then so I can pull it up. That's easier than me moving the camera around. Okay. So here's the image. If you can see my cursor, we're marking shadows here here. So you can see four, three fingers. We have one, two, three, and then the fourth is the thumb. So the, um, the back fingers are in shadow. And in general, the edge of pretty much the whole hand is like barely in shadow. But really make it light. The darkest part is on the left right here. If it's better for, for you guys to see it in this view, just let us know in the chat. Um, you know, if you can still see me in the thumbnail and that's better, then please just let me know.
Okay, is it okay with everybody if I switch back? Awesome. Okay. Here we go. You can see me. Perfect. So, dry brush. Oh my goodness. Dry brush is loose really loose it's not precise you know there isn't any sharpness to it it's really quite loose and you might think oh my gosh this looks so messy but that's okay just trust the process it'll look it'll look good at the end the glazing is where it all comes together all right let's see so we've dry brushed the skin the shadow of the skin so now we're going to dry brush the mid-tone of the skin. Um, so again, for the skin, mix whatever color that you desire. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to make, you know, like peach toned skin. So a little bit goes a long way um, with skin tone. A long way. Okay. So we're gonna take a good amount of white Um, we're going to take a little bit of red, a little bit goes a long way. You know, you don't want to overdo it. It's always better to underdo it and then put in more at the end. I think that might even be too much. So I'm putting some back, cleaning my palette knife, taking the cadmium yellow medium, like equal parts red to yellow, a lot more white. And, and skin color is typically white, red, yellow, and green, but we don't have green today, so we are going to just take like the most minuscule part of blue. And look how crazy that looks. Don't worry. Once you mix until all the streaks are gone, it'll reveal what color you are truly making. And don't use it until you've actually gotten all of those streaks out because we don't want to be painting the arm and then like have a random red streak. We just, we want it to be one solid color. Look at that. Beautiful mid-tone. Perfect. Okay. Now, Dry brush. Let's take our medium sized dry brush. And if it's wet, make sure it's really dry again. Dipping it into that skin tone that we just made. Whatever skin color you're using, as long as it's, you know, not the brightest part of the skin, it's like in the middle between shadow and super light, that's good. So I'm just going to fill in. And we do want the dry brushing to overlap into the shadow. Try not to glaze, I mean, dry brush over the, um, the fingernails. We'll paint that later. For this bottom part, I'm going to switch to a really small, a small dry brush. To do the fingers.
and um, dry brushing over the purple on the fingers is good. But really lightly, we need to see that purple. We need to see it. Oh my gosh, violet. The reason that we did fluorescent red underpainting is so that, you know, it actually accentuates the colors that you put on top. So like if we had done blue, fl fluorescent blue underneath, the skin right now would look entirely different. So that red gives the skin that pink tone. I would still use fluorescent red as an underpainting with brown skin. While you guys are catching up, looks like I forgot to do my sweater up here, so do that. Oops. Smeared my finger down here, so I'm going to take my favorite eraser brush. And just take it off. I'm constantly checking the back of my hand for paint because it just ends up on the canvas everywhere. So, I mean, right now I'm not being so, you know, I don't care so much. But um, in general, if you're trying to make like a really nice painting, always make sure your hands are clean. Fantastic. So I'm going to go ahead and move on to the glazing, which is my favorite part. So we're going to glaze the uh, sweater. This is where you break out your really nice brushes. And your slow dry, oh my, I'm so bad at this camera, uh, your slow dry medium, slow dry blending medium. This is my best friend. I absolutely love it. It increases, um, you know, the time of drying for acrylic paint, paint from like to like 30, 45 minutes, depending on how much you use, or if you use a lot, like uh, an entire hour. Um, and acrylic paint on its own usually dries, honestly, within a couple minutes, not even like one and a half, maybe at, at most, which makes it really, really hard to to make beautiful gradients. So the slow dry blending medium um, helps the paint act almost like oil paint. Uh, you have so much time to work with it. It's really awesome. Okay, so for glazing the sweater, we're gonna go ahead and start with the black. But I, I don't really wanna make a black black sweater. I wanna make a very dark navy blue sweater. So we're just gonna take that phthalo blue um, and mix it with your black. I don't think you need to see me do that because it's pretty straightforward. Okay. I've got a really beautiful blue, navy blue that is. Now, here's my navy blue. Putting some slow dry medium on it. Taking my wet brush, squeezing the paint off, I mean, sorry, the water off a little bit. Diving in. You know, you want a little bit more paint on your brush than slow dry medium. You don't want to cake on the slow dry medium. Oh my gosh, look how, oh, you can't even see. I'm sorry. Look how beautiful. I love it.
So I'm just making really big strokes. One side to the other. And to make it easier for me, I'm turning it to the side. Remember, this is a painting. So if you see brush strokes and it's really, you know, expressionist, that's awesome. If you've seen my work before, you'll notice that it's pretty, pretty smooth and tight and you don't see too many brush strokes, which is why my paintings take me so long. But today we're just gonna keep it loose, keep it fun. So I went over um, onto the pants a little bit, which I don't want. So I put my eraser brush in the water and I just barely taking any off. You don't need to do that. I'm just like, that's just how I am. Okay, I'm gonna flip it the other direction so that I can um, paint the very top stripe. So, you know, going back to your question, Nishi, I guess I am actually changing this painting um, a little bit, changing the, the black stripes to blue stripes. Go over it again. So it's a little bit darker. If, um, if you put on too much slow dry medium, it'll probably drip down the canvas. So you can do a little bit less. Oop. This happens all the time. I'm gonna get my handy dandy eraser brush and fix this ASAP. But I don't have to rush because the slow dry medium takes forever to dry. If you aren't using medium and you go over the edges and want to erase it, do it stat. You probably have like 15 seconds to erase it fully. All right. I'm really rinsing this brush off to get off all of the blue, like vigorously. Cause there's still blue paint in there. I don't know if you can see. So I'm actually just gonna squeeze it off and then rinse it one more time. Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay. So now we're gonna glaze the yellow part of the sweater. So we're gonna pour our um, slow dry medium next to the cadmium yellow medium. You don't need much because it's, it's just one stripe. Sorry. There we go. Okay. So a little bit more paint than slow dry on your brush. Not too much slow dry. You don't want it to drip. 
And then we're going to do nice, big, long strokes from side to side. Per usual, I will be rotating. Sorry, I'm gonna, I'm gonna block you for a second. I'm just gonna make a quick line. Now, normally what I would do when I'm making this painting is wait for the black stripes to dry completely before I do um, the yellow stripe. Because when I go over the lines, which of course I inevitably do, I wanna be able to erase just the yellow, not the blue. So now, you know, I've gone over the line a little bit in the top. Um, can't really tell, but like right here, gone over the line. But, you know, if I try to erase it, I'm going to end up erasing the, the blue stripe as well. So I'm just going to go ahead and leave it. Um, all right. So at this point, we can start glazing the pants. Using that same brush. Um, in with the neon yellow, but with the neon yellow, we're going to mix a little bit of white into there to like brighten it up even further. I don't want it to be pale yellow, but I do want to just put a tad in. Oops. Okay. Okay. So um, we're going to use slow dry medium again. A little bit of water on your brush. More paint than slow dry medium. Okay. And up and down. Just beautiful long strokes. I have a golden retriever, so um, pretty much every one of my paintings has a dog hair in it. I just had to take one out right now. And we're even going over the shadows. We're literally going over everything. But what's so great about the slow dry medium is that it creates a beautiful transparent glaze. So for instance, I'm making a painting right now that is actually, it's 40 by 36 and it's a bunch of yellows just like this painting. I don't know why I'm really drawn to yellows lately. Um, and it's exciting because I get to glaze like all yellows. I get to use, you know, yellow ochre, Indian yellow, medium yellow, deep yellow, neon yellow, lemon yellow. I mean, the list goes on and I use all of them in these thin glazing layers to build up these really rich, dense colors. You need to use a smaller brush to get around these fingers. Do it.
Awesome. Pretty. It's all pastel-y, bright. Very cool. I'm going to give you guys uh, a little moment before we start glazing the skin. Okay. So for the skin, I'm going to use this brush for glazing the skin. Um, I really like that it's a flat top. I love the length of it um, because it's really easy to make beautiful long strokes. Um, this is also a great brush for it. I love it. So assuming you still have some of your skin tone left, whatever that may be, we're going to use that. But I'm adding a lot more white. I want to make this a different tone. You know, same color, just a little higher on the spectrum from black to white. That should be light enough. Love. Okay. So I'm going to take this brush. I'm going to pour some that slow dry medium right next to that beautiful skin tone that we just mixed. And we're going to start at the top and go all the way down. I like to make big long strokes, but if you want to do, you know, shorter ones, just paint however you want. This is your painting. Nice. That's good. I'm not painting the nail. You might need to move to a, a smaller brush for the fingers. You know, I'll just rotate it so I'm not blocking you guys. And let's see. Woo! I got blue from my sweater and my skin. Mayday! Mayday, mayday. So you, I washed my brush, got all the paint off of it. It has water on it. And I'm scooping it off and wiping it on my towel. And then like very quickly going back over it. This is why I wait for its neighbors to dry before I paint on it because it's really like too much of a hassle to actually have to correct everything. So then I have to redo all the strokes so that it looks continuous. 
It happens to me a lot in paintings where I'll be like, oh my gosh, it looks perfect. And then, and then I smudge it and I have to like redo the whole thing. You know, there's sometimes I actually have to sand down my canvas because I messed it up and I, I, I have to make it all like flat again so it's uniform, not splotchy. So for the nail, we're gonna add just more white um, to the skin tone, like a really light one. So I'm taking a, a lot of white, bad white, I have different colors in it. So I'm gonna get some fresh white. But, you know, he could also have painted nails. So, if you want to give him like red fingernails or something, that'd be fun. I always change nails in my paintings. I always put really cool, you know, patterns on nails, whether it's uh, women or, or men in my paintings, they usually have painted nails sometimes. All right, so for, the thumb nail. I'm going to take a, a smaller brush, a smaller nice brush, whatever you have. And just using a teensy, teensy, like teensy amount of slow dry medium. You know, actually that's like not light enough for me. I want to make this even lighter. Nice. Continuing the glazing of the skin. You might not need to do this, but I want to go back in and go over it. I'm gonna be a little bit more precise. You may have already done this. About the fingers. All right. Looks cool. Love it. So at this point, we finished our glazing and uh, we're going to do Q&A. So if anybody has any questions. Hi. Woo. Hello. Okay, so now we are going to be doing the chains, you guys. Oh my gosh, I love this part. But it also stresses me out, um, but I love the challenge. So we, hopefully you guys have two, two size rigger brushes. We want like a big one, like a sort of fat one, and like a super skinny one. So first we're gonna be using the fat one. I'm gonna get my old palette paper back. Okay. So we're gonna um, really wet this brush, the big rigger. We want it wet, but not like dripping wet. We're gonna dip it into the black. So, do you guys want me, I'm gonna pull up the, the picture again so that you can um, see what I'm talking about really quick. Okay, so we're gonna do the chain. 
I'm following my cursor, you can see it starts up here, goes down and it ends to the right of that big pant shadow. So just imagine a straight line. We don't need to, to, to draw it out or anything like that. We are just noticing the placement, but this is your painting, so it can be anywhere. So what we're gonna be doing for the chain is basically painting a bunch of zeros, uh, skinny zeros, zeros that look like lowercase l's, fat zeros, because the chain is like twisting as it goes down. So they're gonna be all different sizes. Um, I will paint like a few for you and then show you. Um, so if it's still wet, which it probably is, instead of leaning your hand, you're just gonna lean your knuckle. Just barely, just using your knuckle. Your knuckle is the only thing that would be touching the canvas. And if you're smudging <laughs> as much as I am, that's totally fine. You know, the whole point of this is just to learn how to make the chain. And so you can review this tutorial on your own later and really wait for it to dry and, and do it appropriately, you know, the way that I actually would and perfect it on a different canvas. You know, this, this canvas can be, you know, loose and for learning. And the reason we did a navy blue sweater was so that the black of the chain would show up. Oof. Wetting a random brush right now. Seeing if I can get that blue off. Um, um I have yep. a really quick question. What if your paint is like chunky? How do you like like tone it down, like make it less chunkier? Like when you take it out of the tube, it's chunky. Oh your 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 actual paint out of the tube is chunky? Is that what you're saying? Uh-huh. Okay. Um you're gonna need to buy a palette knife because when the paint comes out really chunky like that, you just like squish it, <laughs> you know? And then you add a little bit of water because uh, clumpy might mean it's a little bit old, which is fine. I use really old paint all the time. <laughs> so Can you I just... use the back of the brush like that? Um, sorry, I can't see you. Like this part of the brush, like the um, back handle. Um, yeah, that's fine. Okay. Um, but I do encourage you to get a palette knife. Okay. And you know, if you don't want the chain to go all the way down, don't worry about it. The reason I swatched my pants right there is because I wasn't being responsible and keeping my hand clean. So. So all of these zeros are connecting. I'm just painting zeros. See all my zeros? Oh, my goodness. Pretty loose. Um, but again, in real life, I would be taking my sweet time. <laughs> so while that dries, we're going to go ahead and move on to the drawings on the pants, which is really exciting. So I would also use the fat rigger brush for this. Normally what I would do is I would do all of my drawings in red first, you know, 
Um, but we're not going to do that today because what I love is building up layers of colors. I just think it makes paintings look so much more interesting than just like cutting straight to the point. Um, but unfortunately for this class, we will be cutting straight to the point. So I'm going to be dipping my fat brush into the black. Um, but you guys can, can doodle on your pants with whatever color you want. I actually think red looks pretty rad. Uh, so that would be a cool choice. Or you can do phthalo blue would be also awesome. That violet you mix would be cool. Um, yeah. Okay. So right now we're going to take our time, probably a few minutes um, to, to doodle. Just doodle, you guys. First, I'm going to make this anarchy symbol. I'm still just using my knuckle. And if you need more steady, hold your elbow. Hold your elbow and use your knuckle. You'll be fine. Now the K, if you're following this picture, um, if you're not, don't listen to me right now. Do whatever you want. But if you're following me, the A here that comes out, connects directly with the K. The A connects with the K as well. And the X connects with the A. Moving on to Hello Kitty. You know, and you could even have even more fun with this. Like you could do Hello Kitty in like hot pink or even fluorescent red first or something that, you know, accentuates who Hello Kitty is and then go over it again with black. Um, you know, everything could have a different color undertone. How fun. Keep it loose. Doesn't need to be tight. You know, the, the great thing about painting is that your only responsibility is to imply something, just to imply it. And, you know, our brain automatically pulls it together and we understand, like, even if you had just drawn this in a boxy shape, that's fine. We can automatically determine that that is an arm and a hand. So you never really have to be accurate in painting, which is so liberating. And for, you know, the tip of the bones, see if I can do this without wobbling. I'm just going to do one. And then one, two, one, two. It's really hard at this angle. Um, and then, yep, cool. Cool, cool. Oh, 
All right. I made that top whisker way too fat. I'm gonna get my favorite erasing brush. Here we go. Best friend. And when I'm erasing this, I'm taking off part of the yellow, which stinks. Um, which is again, I've said this a million times, why I always wait for everything to dry before I go and paint the next level. Don't feel like you need to paint what I am. You can paint whatever you want on your pants. I'm just going to do like, you know, do 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 random squiggles. They do have, it looks like some, some red squiggles in there. No, so I can just go ahead and actually, I don't like that. I wish I hadn't done that. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so if this, if these pants were dry in real life, I would just take my towel, dip it in water and then wipe it off and like do it again in black or whatever. But I'm not going to do that right now. So I'm just trying to cover it in black. Okay. How's everybody doing on doodles? Should we move on to the chain? I'll give you a few more minutes to doodle. If you're done and you, want, and you want to get ready for the next step, I want you to make a very, very dark gray with a little bit of phthalo blue. So I have my black, a little bit of white. Not nearly enough. Again, keep mixing until you don't see any streaks because you really don't know what the color is until you're done. Like three, five swipes ago, I thought I was I was mixing the wrong color, but it turns out it's perfect. So using the fat rigger brush, ding, ding, ding. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and dip it in the water. And we're just gonna paint the lines for the bracelet, which just three lines. So you can see that I've actually wrapped the um, bracelet around the hand. Um, we really want to make it look like it is 
3D when she's actually wearing it, that it's not like a tattoo of stripes. So if we're ready to move on, which I hope we are, you know, if you're still doodling your pants, just hold off on it, come back to it later, um, you know, after this tutorial so we can jump into the chain. Okay, so now is my favorite part. It's very challenging. You ready? Okay, uh, I don't know if I am. So we are going to make a very, very, very light gray, you know, almost white, but gray. And this is gonna be involving our super tiny rigger brush. So I'm gonna go ahead. And you don't need to see me mix this because it's, it's just light gray. While you're mixing this, separately uh, mix, oh, I painted my nose. Uh, <laughs> this always happens. So I want you to keep that dark gray that you used for the bracelet. We're gonna use it in this chain. Okay, I'm gonna take my slow dry medium. Here's my gray. I'm just gonna do a little bit, not too much. So really get your, your rigger brush like tight. I know this is weird, but I go like that to really get like a fine point. So using the slow dry medium and the super light gray, In order to keep um, its form, this is hard because I ripped it off the cardboard and I, I don't have to balance, but I twist it like this to give it a nice fine point. The reason we want such a fine point is because um, we are going to be painting within the black lines. You will see the black lines as a border. Now, before you jump in and start painting these chains, just let me do a few for you. And then I'll show you what I've done and you can go ahead and do it. This is very hard with a wet canvas. Very hard. Doesn't look so hot. So I'm going to redo it on the side here. Just going to do a couple chains on the side so that I can show you what I mean. Okay, so the chains are all, the black is all touching, right? They're connected zeros, but the white, am I kidding? Okay. The white actually, or the light gray, you see how you can still see the black outlines around it? That helps it feel like there's shadow. So we want to do the light gray within the black. And I don't know if I'm explaining this very well, so feel free to jump in with a question. <laughs> I honestly like just figured out how to paint chains. You know what I mean? Like this year, I still find the process to be. Is this topic. right? Huh? Is this the way you, is this what you mean? Um, let me go to the gallery view, sorry. Oh my God, nailed it. 
Good job. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so using the, the bigger ones that I did on the side, I think it'll be a lot easier to show you what I mean. Okay, this is better for you. Oh, there we go. Okay, do you see that? Oh my gosh. You know what? That's like making everybody so dizzy. Am I kidding? Okay, um, so here we go. Everything has a black border wherever the chains intersect. There is black in between it. Now with the even darker gray, like that darker gray that we used for um, the bracelet lines, we're going to use to create shadow in the chain. And you need slow dry medium for this because the shadow is like is reflective on the chain. So wherever the chains wrap around each other, wherever they intersect, wherever they go under each other, behind each other is where you do like a little dot of shadow. I'll show you what I mean. Okay. Oh, wait, which one? Oh yeah. I don't know if you can even see it. I mean, it's like, I don't, so I've done like tiny um, gray marks wherever they intersect, like darker ones to create that shadow to really make it look like it's going behind one another. And if I really want something to blend really nicely, I'll just take a completely different brush, a clean brush. I will put only slow dry medium on it. That's it, just slow dry medium. And I will blend those two colors together. want to try to like fix my smudges. I always take preventative measures um, to keep my painting safe. I don't like having to fix my problems. <laughs> So one of the preventative measures is waiting for everything to dry so that you don't have these oopsies moments. Uh, I'm sure everyone's still painting the chain, but I'm just gonna move on to the bracelet really quick. Because honestly, this painting this chain like could take you an hour. <laughs> so we're just gonna move on. Um, using the very skinny rigor brush, we're now gonna work on the bracelet, okay? So using that same really light gray that we used for the other chain, 
Again, we're gonna like twist our brush so that it has a like, really nice fine point and like more so than usual for this tiny part. Now this is crazy. Um, so you can either make just like beautiful bracelet, whatever you want, or we can imply that it's a chain. If I wanted to make something this tiny look like a chain, it would take me a very long time, but it's possible. So I'm just gonna do a few marks and then I will show you what that means at the end. And it's, it's honestly of the utmost importance that like this paint, I can't say this enough, that this paint dries before we go on with the highlights, but we, we just don't have time. So same rule applies. Always keep that border. I'm gonna switch cameras again so I don't make everyone dizzy. Same rule applies. Um, this is actually like pretty white light in real life. Um, bright white, I mean, like light gray, you can't tell. But you can see that we're merely suggesting a chain here. Keeping the dark gray lines in between all of those marks. Can you please bring it up um, very quickly again? I just want to see how the chain bends in to each other. Oh, on the bracelet? Let me just make a couple more marks so that it's like actually clear for you. Okay. Just give me like two seconds. Mm -hmm. Perfect, I already switched. Okay, ding, 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 here we go. So I changed the direction of the stripes or like the, the dashes I'll call them as they whip around. So when it goes around the skin, you'll see that they're actually a little bit more vertical. Cool. Okay. Thank you. Welcome. And then if we really wanted to get crazy and make this super realistic, sorry about that. Um, if we want to make this super realistic, we're going to go ahead and take our skin tone and with that same tiny brush, And I'm going to make like little, I'll show you because this is so hard to explain. I'm going to make like little curves so that the bracelet actually looks like it's round instead of like a line. Okay, this is chunkier than I would like, but it's good enough to show you what I mean. So on the top part, can you see how it's actually more rounded underneath and on top? Yeah. So that's, that's a step to actually make it feel like it's more realistic. You kind of got rid of the black line, you just made it disappear with the white chains. Yeah, I am, I'm moving a little quickly right now, but ideally I would have been more precise. Um, okay, and if we want to get even more detailed, so we look, the, oh, this will be the last step, okay? 
I'm just going to leave that up as it is right now so I can show you what I'm doing quickly. Mm, not sure if this is going to work while it's wet. But what I'm trying to do You can't really tell. But what I'm doing is I'm essentially putting like a polka dot in the middle of that very, very light gray. Oh, there we go. You can't see it at all. But I'm putting a, a polka dot of the skin tone in the center of those light gray dashes so that they look like holes into the skin. Wow, we did it, you guys. Two hours and 10 minutes, look at us. That's amazing. Okay, so I'm going to pull up my closing slide here. And share my screen with you. Okay. So today, this is what we've covered. We have covered all five stages of my process. Um, highlights can also mean, you know, like these very, these, these details like we did in the chain and things like that. So, you guys, this has been so awesome. I'm so grateful to have been here with you. This is amazing. Um, so here is a picture of my studio. Um, just some of the paintings that I've made over the years, well, over the year and a half, rather. Um, please follow me at Marissa Paints A Lot. Give me a like, give me a message. Um, I'd love to stay connected. And also I have these original paintings and prints of these paintings for sale on my website. So thank you so much, you guys. This has been awesome. Does anybody have any last questions before we